Okay, so now we need to find out how to create a password file, how to put entries inside that password file, the login IDs and the passwords, and then uh, how the whole thing works. So the first thing, how to create a password file. Okay, to create a password file, there is a Unix command, so I'm going to type it at the dollar prompt. The command is O-R-A-P-W-D. This is the command. The file is the name of the password file. The name of the password file, uh, you know, is, is it has a unique name there. Okay, I'm gonna. It's it's. Uh, you should be. It's, uh, the, all, the password file is inside the DBS directory. So hopefully, when you are executing this command, you are inside the DBS directory in the, under Oracle Home. And the name of the password file is O R A P W. And the name of the instance is let us say uh, focus one. Dot D not DBF. Dot, uh, no, that, that is what it is. On the Windows, it is dot ORA. So this is the name of the password file. So ORAPWD file is equal to this. You are inside the DBS directory before you fire this command. And then you have certain additional things over there. Uh, you can, uh, since I don't have enough uh, you know, space over there, I will write it down. Uh, you can say uh, uh, entries. Or even, in fact, this much of command is enough. Uh, Entries is equal to, let us say, by default, I believe it is uh, 50. Oh. Edwin, sir. Uh, what is password file to do in second one? Password file. Uh, in the, in the starting. The ORAPWD. Mm -hmm. ORAPWD is a command which you will have to type. And these are the, this is the arguments oh, oh. for creating a password file whose name is this. Okay. A new file will get created whose name is uh, ORAPW focus one. It will get created inside the DBS directory and it will be a blank file with certain format inside. It's a binary file. So this is and, and uh, it can accept all uh, not more than 50 different entries. 50 different entries means 50 different login IDs and their passwords. So we can give the, the, that information also there. But this much of command is enough. Once this file is created, it is blank at this time. The second thing is you should log in inside the Oracle and then you should say grant let us say shaker sorry grant sys dba to shaker obviously i'm assuming here that the user shaker is already created so you are granting a special privilege called a sys dba to shaker what happens at this time at this time shaker and his password and everything else is now kept inside this file this file is blank initially. The moment I grant a sysdba, uh, my password will be stored inside the orapw focus file. So if I grant uh, sysdba to another user, his credentials, authentication credentials will also be in that orapw file. This is how you kind of do that. Since this is a binary file, we cannot go and open this in VI and find out what is information is there uh, inside that file. So, to find out what users have already been placed inside this file by granting the sysdba privilege, we fire a command select star from v dollar pw file underscore users. v dollar pw file underscore users. This is a data dictionary view which will allow you to view what is inside the password file. So similarly, we have seen different data dictionary views. For example, v dollar data file is a view which will allow me to see what is inside the control files. Basically, it gives me the data file information which is written inside the control file. Okay. Similarly, v dollar pw file users is a view which will allow me to see the information in the password file. And once I do select star from that, I will see shaker, sysdba, you know, another user says DBA and all that stuff. So all who are the users whose passwords are stored, passwords will not be displayed obviously, but uh, what privileges have been granted to them will be, uh, will be displayed. But if you say grant DBA to users, DBA is a role, it's not a privilege. So these users will not go inside the password file. Huh? Only the guys who have been granted a sys DBA and there is also sys OPR operator which has certain privileges of starting and shutting down the database. But sys DBA is the main guy. The, uh, that is not mandatory there. So this this will work actually. 
this this will work there is there is another there are multiple arguments password is the is the actual password which will be uh, which is the password or that will allow you to uh, change the password file entries you know what whoever has created that password uh, no not whoever has created the password the password uh, which will allow you to change things in the password file so okay, it's a since uh, since since we are logged in as a DBA role hopefully I'm assuming that you are logged in as a as a user uh, whose group is DBA this is kind of a mute point here so uh, don't worry too much about this guy this file is located in oracle underscore home directory oracle underscore home dbs dbs directory on windows it is a database directory and this user password will be stored there <coughs> this user password uh, no this is the password to modify no this is the password to modify certain entries like like for example if you are, if i want to change the entries from 50 to 100 okay so that means i am really modifying the structure of the uh, password file i need that password that time for that file. For, uh, for, for manufacture, for not manufacture, for uh, modifying the structure of that file. That is that password. Uh, but you don't really require it. You know, you will realize that when you type this password as anything, it will be accepted there. And the reason for that is you are a member of a DBA group. That is what the whole thing is. Okay, so this is what the uh, grant will put the user shaker and his password in the password file. Revoke will take the user shaker from the uh, password file out. And this is what we'll see, show, show you uh, who the users are in the password file. But all this thing can be done only if, so step number three actually, which should be done before this thing, there is an initial, initialization parameter called as remote login password file okay uh, so that initialization parameter there remote login password file it has multiple values it has three different types of values one is none by default it is none the second is exclusive and third one is shared okay by default it is none it means do not use the password file for any kind of remote authentication by default even if you create the password file even if you do all these things and if this is set to none password file will not be used nobody will be able to log in remotely as sysdba even if they know the password so by default it is null my recommendation is to keep it to exclusive and exclusive means what this password file is used only for the instance focus one if you set it to shared then this password file is used for focus 1 as well as focus 2 as well as focus 3 one password file for all the multiple instances on that data on that machine so set it to exclusive uh, unless or until you have too many uh, instances over there so this is what the password file so our job will be if we are going to use the password file create the password file grant a user a sysdba privilege he will be inside the password file and then before even doing all these things make sure that init.ora parameter is set to exclusive and once you do it your users will be able what is the final effect your users will be able to log in from a remote machine as a sysdba where can you repeat this parameter last one init.ora init or, or p5 P file or SP file. And can we assign password to that P file or SP file? Password to the P file and SP file, no. Because there is no critical information to the P file or SP file. The, the real passwords are inside the password file. Passwords. So, so again, these are some kind of tricky questions. Not tricky now, uh, since you, you understand. Where are the password stores? Pa passwords stored. Uh, the answer is depends. Uh, you know, if you are a normal user, your password is stored inside the data dictionary DB underscore users. If you are a sysdba and we are using the password file, then it is inside the password. Uh, the DBA, group? DBA group, no need of passwords. OS. Yeah, because OS authentication is done. Okay. Uh, uh, wherever OS passwords are stored, that is where the OS password is stored. But once you are logged into OS, so OS passwords are stored on the Unix side etc uh, shadow file. Uh, so there is no need for Oracle passwords. I, I, I think 
I, I would try to explain this as much as I could, but I still think, uh, you know, or, uh, based on my experience, password file is not clear to uh, most of the guys. So my question to you is now, are you able to get what we just discussed? Huh? Any any questions, Kai? Change password. Password ka change kar da. How okay, how do you change the password? Same process. Alter user shaker identified by password. Okay, and that password will be changed over here. Same process. No no other method of uh, doing the process uh, password change. <coughs> So again, uh, summary is, is password file required? Answer is, it, it is not mandatory, but it is required if your users would like to log in from a remote machine as a sysdba, as sysdba. Okay, that's it.